Hey guys, welcome into Mock Draft Monday. Happy July to you. That's right, it's July 6th. Hope everybody had a great 4th of July weekend. You just heard my boy C-Zone, local artist here from Lafayette, Louisiana. If you don't know about him, learn about him. He's on YouTube. Go check him out at C-Z-O-N-N-E. Uh, hey, that's my boy. Go, go hook him up with some love on YouTube. Uh, give him a shout out. Listen, we are having a very special mock draft Monday for you. Uh, welcome into Fantasy Football Academy 2020. I am the Dean, and we are doing a mock draft by request. That's right. Go to any one of my videos, hit me up on the comments section, and you too can request a special draft just for you. This right here is for my boy D Money. You know him, you love him, you've seen him on here before. He sat through some. Uh, some mock drafts with me, set through a couple episodes, and he wanted a 10-person draft running back heavy from the fifth position. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, from the fifth position or even the sixth, uh, it's kind of middle of the pack for that kind of league. Uh, so if you go, let's say you got a 12-man league, five, six, seven, you're looking at middle of the pack. It can be a very tricky spot to choose from because you're going to be either starting trends or you're going to be wrapping up and catching them on the backside when they do runs so if you have a run on quarterbacks if you have run on wide receivers you're going to be you can either be reactionary or you can be proactive and start that run uh, if you start that run you're going to be getting the higher tier guys in that run if you're going to be reactionary and you catch it on the tail end you, a lot of the times you hit the panic button you see these guys going you see tight ends going you're going to see guys taking Kittle and Kelsey and uh, Andrews and Zach Ertz and all these big names, and you're going to be like, oh, my gosh, i got to get a tight end. No, guys, calm down. Pump the brakes. If you watched this before and you've seen my mock drafts before, you know that you can wait on a quality tight end toward the end of the draft. It's not a big deal if you miss them out. Okay, so pump the brakes. We're going to teach you. We're going to show you. We're going to walk through, walk with you through this and get you right on your mock drafts. 10 person league, your talent pool is going to be a little deeper to choose from than a 12 or a 14 man league. So it uh, it's going to kind of skew the ADP numbers. And what does ADP mean? That's right. Average draft position. Now, we're in July. We're getting a little closer to the when guys are going to start doing their drafts for real. Uh, usually around August. We're doing ours actually in September, a couple of days before the draft. I like to do it because you pretty much everybody signed. Everybody's where they're going to be. You're not going to have any huge surprises uh, that could have affected your, your draft, the draft stock of certain players. Um, one of the players in particular that we're going to be talking about today before we get into the mock draft is none other than former MVP and starting quarterback for the Carolina Panthers, now with the New England Patriots replacing the legendary Tom Brady. And yes, it hurts me to say that because I'm not a big Brady fan, but Cam Newton is now a Patriot. Guys, this was this was huge, uh, basically just because we didn't really have any other news to talk about. Also because it was a very uh, incentive-laden contract that Newton's signing. He's talking about he's getting back to respect uh, it's about respect for him. It's not about the money. He's trying to get all these haters off his back saying that he's washed up, that he, he can't play anymore, that he doesn't have anymore, that he's lost a step, whatever. So he's going to be motivated, to say the very least, this season. Now, I went ahead and I ran through some numbers because I was thinking, well, you know, Cam going up to New England, eh, I don't know about it. He was hurt, this, that, the other. So, but – I was thinking about, you know, the the line, the O line for Carolina. I wasn't really impressed with. Uh, McCaffrey made a lot out of those guys uh, with his elusiveness and the ability to break tackles last year. Uh, Cam really didn't. He was hurt, so really didn't get to see what he was like. So I went back to the last year that he had a, a decent year, which 2018. Uh, he was able to play 14 games. He only missed two of the of that season. And I wondered what he and Brady looked like 
compared side by side. So I looked at Tom Brady from last year. Tom Brady last year ranked 12th as a QB. He ranked as a QB 12 for fantasy football, scoring 279.68 points, averaging almost seven, just under 17 points a game. Nah, it's okay. It's average. It's not like mind blowing or anything like that. It's not going to win you a championship. Then I looked at Cam for 2018. Guess what, guys? What did Cam rank? That's right. QB 12, 2018. And the cast of characters that he had, and you go back and look at it, he had Devin Funches, he had DJ Moore, his rookie season, uh, an aging Greg Olson, uh, Curtis Samuel, Torrey Smith. And most of these guys aren't even around anymore. I mean, uh, Funches isn't all that McCaffrey's still there and he's going to be the center point of that offense. Uh, DJ Moore, we're not sure what we're going to expect from him with uh, Teddy Bridgewater and Greg Olson's gone. So, I mean, these guys really not, you know, the, the all-star caliber that you're thinking about. Now I looked at the cast, the characters that he has to deal with in new England guys, the only player to rank top 15 that he was playing with was Edelman. And that's only because Brady concentrates the one player. He gets comfortable with one guy. So all this talk about Brady being in Tampa and Mike Evans being this and Chris Godwin being top 10, and he, Brady can't sustain two top 10 fantasy running backs. Okay, so pump your brakes on that. Now, Cam, I'm pretty sure that Harry – uh, Nikhil Harry, that's N-K-E-A-L Harry, is going to be taking a step up. Uh, last year was his rookie year. He really didn't get a whole lot of action in because he really didn't have the confidence of Tom Brady. Now you've got a sophomore wide receiver. He's got a little more, a little used to the game. He's uh, adjusted to the speed of the NFL from the college game, and he's coming in with a new quarterback. So they're going to have what seems like, according to all reports, a very long training camp because the players are looking for no preseason games. What does this mean for fantasy football? My personal opinion, not a whole lot, just for the simple fact that preseason doesn't mean a whole lot for anyone. Okay. Yeah. You get to see what some rookies look like. You get to see if the veterans are rusty or rested and things like that. But how much do you really get to see? The starters really aren't played a whole lot, and half the guys that you're going to see are going to be bagging groceries when the season starts. Okay, so I'm not really worried about not seeing a preseason. I'd rather have these guys get the chemistry together in the training camp and, uh, you know, get that, get that rhythm down to head into the regular season. So with that said, what's my take on Cam Newton? I'm saying – cautiously draft him uh, maybe as your backup QB he's got a lot of upside you know the Belichick's going to know how to use him you know that uh, Sonny Michelle is going to get a bump up I think Harry is going to get a bump up uh, Edelman has always been solid but the man is 34 years old if I'm not mistaken okay he's getting up there he's not the spring chicken that he used to be he's not going to be able to, to take these these hits going over the middle like he used to. So he's not going to have the same the same chemistry that he had with Brady with Newton. It's a different animal. Newton's going to be a lot more mobile. Uh, he's bigger than Brady. He's more athletic than Brady. Uh, and, I mean, he's he's been in the league long enough to be able to read defenses, guys. He's going to have a chip on his shoulder. He's going to be – uh, driven because he has a very incentive-laden contract. So if he doesn't prove himself this year, he doesn't get paid, and New England's already got a fran is able to franchise him next year. They've already worked that out. So with that said, New England has bought into Cam Newton. Now you've seen a lot where when New England ships the player off, they might be good for that one year after they've left New England and everybody looks at it and goes, why they leave New England? Why New England let them go? And then the very next year, they fall off the map and you never hear from them again, okay? Guys, 
New England knows when a player is done. Sorry, I, I'm not a Patriot apologist. I'm not a Patriot fan by any means, if you can't tell. So, uh, but it's just a simple fact, okay? You see guys leave New England and just have absolutely horrible careers from there on out. They've never lived back up to the hype that they once used to. So, with that said, like I, like I said, I would I would take Cam Newton as a backup. I wouldn't take him as my starter. Um, I would be very high on Sony Michelle, a lot higher than uh, maybe you know James White. Um, I don't see I, I I see a lot of upside in Harry uh, because I don't think Cam's ever really had that big stereotypical receiver to throw to. He's still got an arm. He's still got a cannon. Uh, he can still air it out. So it's going to be interesting. The, and to say the least, to see what goes on there. Um, without any farther further ado, uh, we are going to be to be checking out the uh, the new fantasy football. We're not gonna like I said, that was my boys C Zone once again. Uh, so you see up here, we got our draft configuration and you guys please go check them out go check out my boy c-zone uh show him some love that's c-z-o-n-n-e um and uh on on my channel down bottom when you see it hit the bell subscribe like share i'd appreciate it uh you know i'm out here grinding trying to put these this content out for you guys so please support the uh, the program uh we've already got a set up here 2020 season standard scoring uh, snake formation with a basic pick logic. Uh, number of teams is 10. Like I said, we're picking from the fifth position. Uh, we're going one quarterback, two wide receivers, two running backs, one flex, which is a running back or a wide receiver, defense, kicker, and six bench spots. So let's go on down. Uh, once again, no time on the clock. So uh, we're going to be walking through this and, and baby stepping guys. Uh, so everyone can keep up and there's not any rush to make your pick. So let's go ahead and start. While we're loading this up, I would like to say thank you to Zia of Lafayette, uh, who is going to be sponsoring the draft this year. Uh, we're going to be having a draft live from Zia. Uh, I will post the, uh, the results of that. So... Let's say we got a little pop-up ad. So, with the fifth spot, you see that McCaffrey, of course, went first. Barkley went second. Elliott went third. No big surprise. My big surprise is this, is that Cam Newton – or not Cam, sorry, Cam, Michael Thomas. I'm talking about Cam Newton on the brain. Uh, Michael Thomas went fourth. Now, that's kind of high for – for this, for a non PPR league, okay. Uh, I'm I'm super excited here that Derrick Henry fell, so we're gonna go ahead and take him. And we're gonna see who falls off here. DeAndre's gone. Now, here's the thing: is that we were requested to do a running back heavy draft, so we're gonna go cheat sheets. Uh, Let's go ahead and hide the drafted players because we already know who left. If they're gone, we can't pick them up anyway, so there's no sense in, that, in looking at them. Uh, we look at our running backs here. We've got Aaron Jones. Now, if the Packers believed in Aaron Jones, they wouldn't have drafted A.J. Dillon, Okay. They're not wanting to pay Aaron Jones. I really don't think this has a reflection on the production that he's going to have. But if you look at last season, Aaron Rodgers kind of fell off. And they drafted Jordan Love, so he's not real happy. There's a lot of conflict in Green Bay, and I'm really not sure what's going to be going on there. So, Miles Sanders, Kenyon Drake, Eckler, Clyde Edwards Hilaire, a lot of people are, are big on. I'm not one of them just for the simple fact that this guy's a rookie number one, and he's going to a very 
target rich environment in Kansas City. There's a lot of guys to throw around. Okay, uh, and uh, props to those who uh, <laughs> who recognize the Top Gun. Top Gun reference, target rich environment. So um, let's go ahead and go with Miles Sanders. I like Miles. Uh, he's going to be the RB1. And you see Travis Kelsey go off the board. Travis Kelsey going off the board there, I'm really not too surprised with because that's about where he's going. Uh, you see George Kittle gone. And Kenny Galladay we just missed. Now, guys, I love me some Kenny Galladay. Um, you see d Hob, Chris Godwin, Julio is gone. Um, Devontae Adams, eh, like I said, there's a lot of turmoil going on in Green Bay. Um, that I'm really not down with. So uh, I'm trying to stay away from the Green Bay guys. Um, later in the draft, maybe take a look at Aaron Rodgers, see where he falls. He's been falling hard and late. Okay, guys. Um, now remember, it is July. The closer we get to August uh, and the deeper we get into August, these ADPs are going to kind of they're going to roller coaster, okay? You're going to see some go up, some go down. For your first couple of round guys, it's going to – two, three rounds, it's going to pretty much stay the same. After that, you're going to have a lot of fluctuation depending upon what we see at camp, okay? So we've got Derrick Henry. We've got Miles Sanders. Um, we're going to look at the cheat sheets. And let's look at who we've got for wide receiver that we can look at. Um, you see, uh, tier two is still there. Mike Evans and Amari Cooper. Um, guys, I don't know what's going on in Dallas. I know that Dak's probably going to have a big year. Um, he's looking to get paid. He's looking to to put his his foot on the neck of Jerry Jones and be like, "Hey, pay me, dude. I'm, I'm worth it. If you don't, somebody else will." Uh, just look at what happened with Kirk Cousins. They franchised him twice with the Redskins, and they refused to pay him. Then he goes to Minnesota, gets a fully guaranteed contract. Guys, you're going to have to pay for talent. Okay, Jerry, you got to pay for talent. Okay, you can't just go out and draft a Dak Prescott. They're not falling off trees here. Okay. Um, now, with that said, like I said, if you see the jersey behind me, you know – you know right well that I'm not a, any kind of a Dallas fan, but I'm going to speak the truth to you guys. And the truth is, is that Dak is ticked off. He's not getting paid, uh, and he wants his money. Now, you look at this bunch right here for Tier 3 running backs, it's going to be really, really enticing to take Kenyon Drake after what he did last year and the offense that he's in. It's going to be very tempting to take him. It's also going to be very tempting to take – uh, Austin Eckler, okay, just me personally, because Eckler had a really good year for me, uh, and being at the fifth position, you still got the back end of the round and then the front end of the next coming, and one, you're not going to get, there's possibility that all four of these guys are going to be gone, so I want to look down here at tier four, uh, we're going to see Leonard Fournette. Fournette is kind of in the same predicament that um, that Dak is in. Uh, the only difference is, is that I don't believe that Jacksonville really wants him to be there, and he doesn't want to be in Jacksonville. He had uh, a lot of controversy when he came out and called for Cam Newton to come there, so he doesn't have a lot of confidence in his quarterback or Minshew, but the organization does. If the organization signing your paycheck, you might want to think about falling in line if you want to stay there. If not, he better ball out this year. Uh, I see uh, three good number ones here. Uh, David Johnson is going to be number one in Houston. Um, there's about 250 carries in the running back position that got vacated when Carlos Hyde left and went to Seattle. So David Johnson's definitely going to be getting the volume. David Montgomery, there was a lot of criticism from the head coach there in Chicago. Um, he's on the hot seat. He got cute last year pulling David Montgomery out, went third and one, third and goal, 
um, trying to throw the ball in. It's It was a mess. So look for David Montgomery to get a lot of work this year. Raheem Mostert. Guys, Raheem Mostert, he is the one that stayed. Matt Brito's got shipped out to Miami. Uh, so San Fran has made their bed, and they're ready to roll with Raheem Mostert. Uh, so with that offense, I don't see it. They, they, you know, they jettison Brita, they jettison Emmanuel Sanders. Where's the catch is going to go to? Where's the the attempt, the rushing attempt is going to go to the last man standing? That right now is Raheem Mostert. Yeah, they have Ted Coleman, but Mostert's a better runner. Okay, so you got these three guys here. You in Fournette, DJ, Raheem Mostert. If I come up here, I'm probably not going to get uh, all four of these guys fall back to me. So I've got to pick one out of this group here. Todd Gurley is probably the only one that I'm taking at this point. And I know that before. I wasn't really high on on uh, on him, but as time has progressed, and you'll see this happen a lot, I've kind of softened up a little bit on Ty Gurley. I do give you caution because of the knees, but he did pass the physical. He is the only option in running back in Atlanta, and they do have a high-powered offense. So I'm playing the odds on this one. Um, Let's check out our roster. We've got Henry, Miles, and Gurley. So we've got our – we've got some good running backs here. Let's go to wide receiver, see who's going on here. Our number one, and you know, we're down to tier three. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, if this was not a requested – running back heavy draft, I would have already taken Calvin Ridley last pick and left Todd Gurley to wherever he was going to fall. Um, with that said, I'm going to look at a guy who I believe is going to get a lot of volume because Big Ben's back in town, so we're going to take Juju. Uh, as you see, a lot of guys off the board. Now, the Melvin Gordon pick – I don't like the Melvin Gordon pick this year, guys. I'm not going to lie. Um, he didn't get a whole lot of uh, a whole lot of vote of confidence. And uh, with the Chargers last year, he held out, and Eckler stepped up and balled out. So they let him go, and he's in Denver with a huge running back committee um, between him, Philip Lindsay, uh, Royce Freeman. All those guys are going to be vying for carries, and not everybody's getting fed, okay? So, with that said, let's look at who we've got here now. You'll see right here for the overall that Cooper Cup and Robert Woods are back-to-back. -back. I'm kind of stung on the Rams' offense right now, and I like the Tyler Lockett. Um, I like the Devontae Parker, but I'm going to go down here. And as I've said, this was a requested heavy laden, running back laden, uh, heavy draft requested. So we're going to take David Johnson. Uh, we're going to see a bunch of guys go off the board here. Let's take a look and see wide receiver wise who we have because we've got to get another wide receiver. We've got four running backs right now. Uh, you see Robert Woods made it through. Tyler Lockett made it through. Um, let's look at our draft board, and we're going we're to show you. Okay, right here, we got first, second, third, fourth round. You see a lot of running backs gone, okay? I'm sorry, a lot of uh, receivers gone. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, five running, five wide receivers gone in the fourth, seven between the third and the fourth. 
okay? Here, another five gone in the fifth. And we've got one, okay? So you want to be smart here. Uh, like I said, the Kenny Galladay pick, or the, the Ty Gurley pick, um, I would have gone with Calvin Ridley. I like Ridley. Uh, he's, you, you've got guaranteed production there, proven production in a high-powered offense. Um, Mike Evans, I would stay away from Amari Cooper. Look, Amari Cooper is going to get work because they paid him. Then you've got Mike, you got um, a lot of guys that are going to take Gallup. Guys, if they believed in galloping Mari Cooper and that was going to be it, they wouldn't have drafted C.D. Lamb. Okay, I get that he fell to him. I get that, you know, he was a, the best pick at that spot. But you just paid a top receiver. You already paid your running back. You need to pay your quarterback, and now you're going to go out and get another wide receiver that could potentially command as much money as Amari Cooper does or even more. It's just not smart. So there's something going on in Dallas. They see something in C.D. Lamb, and I'm not really sure what it is yet, but that does not bode well for an aging Amari Cooper and for Michael Gallup, who just doesn't impress. Uh, D.J. Moore, we don't know what we have there in Teddy Bridgewater. I don't like that pick. Um, Adam Thielen would have been a good choice at that point. Um, I like A.J. Brown. I like Terry McLaurin. McLaurin's going to be the only thing in Washington. And Allen Robinson, I like just for a simple volume in Chicago. So uh, that said, like I said, I would have taken – I would have gone ahead and got rid of the girly pick and taken the Calvin Ridley uh, in the third uh, comeback. You could have gotten, uh, let's see, here and there. Uh, I don't know. You had David Montgomery you could have picked from. We still could have gotten David Johnson. He fell in Raheem Mostert. So any of those guys we could have filled in at this point and gotten – Gotten him, gotten uh, Calvin Ridley in place of the Ty Gurley. Ty Gurley's not going to be bad, uh, but there is a high risk at the third in the third round. But that's where his ADP is going. A lot of people are high on him. So let's see. Cheat sheets. Let's go ahead and let's look down here. I like the volume that I believe T.Y. Hilton is going to get. Uh, I will, I'm big on Aaron Rodgers, or not Aaron Rodgers, uh, I'm big on Philip Rivers this year. Uh, he's got a chip on his shoulder. A lot of people saying he's washed up. Now, this is interesting. If we look at our draft board, we are down to the seventh round. And Robert Woods is still here. Okay, so if we look at his ADP, his ADP is 48. Guys, this is this is value right here. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead with Robert Woods just for the value, just for the value here. And let's look at running backs. Now, I know my boy D-Money loves him some Philip Lindsay, but please, for the love of God, stay away from Philip Lindsay this year, guys. Um, you can see Jordan Howard here, but like I said, Matt Breed is also in Miami, so that's a lot of volume to go around. We're not going to – you're not going to get that volume in Miami. You're just not. Um, Ronald Jones, second. Uh, they also drafted uh, Keyshawn Vaughn. So you've got two back-to-back -back guys. I guess I don't like any anything having to do with Brady. I don't trust it. So uh, let's look at our roster real quick. We've got Henry, Miles Sanders, Juju, T.Y., Todd Gurley. For our bench spot, we've got DJ and uh, Robert Woods. So 
with that said, let's go back and look. I'm not seeing a whole lot of uh, running backs left that I like. Um, we can get Madison a little later. Um, but since we've got Gurley, let's go ahead and take Matt Ryan. Matty Ice, I know, I know this is killing you, D-Money, to take him when Breeze is still up there. But I like having the one-two punch, uh, especially when you have when you know you're going to have uh, a high-powered offense. You know you've got to get that you get that go out and get that double that double point point getter with your quarterback and a pass catching running back. So uh, normally I like to do a quarterback with my receiver. So whatever number one receiver I get, um, I like to go out and get the corresponding quarterback so I could T.Y. or Juju I would have gotten Big Ben or gone down and gotten Philip Rivers Rivers I could have gotten a lot later but I think there's going to be a lot more volume a lot more uh, possibilities with Matt Ryan plus whenever I face whoever's got Julio Jones and Calvin Ridley any points that they score I score so kind of cancels them out so let's look down here. Uh, as I said, Michael Gallup, I'm staying away from. Um, let's see. And let's look at our draft board real quick, guys. Now, Alexander Madison, we missed out on just two picks shy. Um, if I was in a real draft, that would have been a heartbreaker just for the simple fact that I love me some Alexander Madison this year. Uh, so if you're going to go with go with that, that's a handcuff for um, Dalvin Cook if he continues to hold out. Now, look for Madison's ADP to keep rising. The closer we get to August, closer we get to the kickoff of the regular season in September. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the first game is going to be the Chiefs and um, the Chiefs and the Texans on Thursday night football on the 10th. That's when it's slated. So let's look at this. If I'm going to take a flyer on anybody, any Running back here, I would probably go down and take a flyer on A.J. Dillon or Zach Moss, uh, just for the simple fact that Zach Moss is probably going to wind up taking over for Singletary and Buffalo, and A.J. Dillon can fill in uh, for Aaron Jones, A.A. Ron, <laughs> the other A.A. Ron in Green Bay, if he gets hurt. So something to keep an eye on. But as far as that goes, let's go down here. We're going to go wide receiver with this pick. And now I like me some uh, some Deontay Johnson, but I've already got Juju. Uh, what you could do here at this point is take him as a handcuff in case Juju falls off or in case uh, Johnson goes ahead and, and starts blowing up. However, I think we're going to go up here. Let's go with old reliable. I know what I'd said earlier, but at this point in the draft, I really don't see any harm in taking a flyer on him. You've already got your uh, wide receiver core pretty much locked up. Um, I'd also like to get in here and get a rookie wide receiver at some point. Um, so let's go in here and let's check out AJ Dillon and see what his ADP is. ADP is 193. Okay, so let's play the ADP game for just a second. Let's look at our draft board. And we are at 1006. Okay, so I can still probably wait another round if I want to get that. If I want to get. Uh, AJ, I can wait on that. And if you look here at the overall, you see Evan Ingram. I'm kind of worried about him just for the simple fact that I don't think, I don't like the, the injury risk with him. 
Um, and it, look at your tight ends. Let's go down here. We're going to scroll down to tight ends. Um, I like Noah Fant this year. Uh, second year with Drew Locke, ADP at 99. So let's go ahead and reach up and grab our tight end that we want. You see CeeDee Lamb off the board, see Justin Jackson off the board. Uh, I'm going to go down here. Sorry, guys, battery's a little low. Huh. So uh, let's go with Manuel Sanders. Get you, get you a little Saint flavor in there for my boy D Money. I know he's a big Saints fan, so we're going to go ahead with that. Uh, you see Deontay Johnson one just went off the board there, like I was talking about. Now, Jerry Judy, Justin Jefferson, which rookie would you take? Okay, Jerry Judy coming in, I'm not really seeing Drew Locke being a better choice than Kirk Cousins. Sorry, I'm, I'm liking Justin Jefferson to step into the Stefan Diggs role. Now, let's go and see. I am surprised to see uh, Daniel Jones off the board at all. Uh, a lot of people are sleeping on him. And Aaron Rodgers. So, uh, you see Wentz, Breeze, uh, Jones, and Rodgers going off the board in the 12th and the 13th round. Um, as you see, there hasn't been a quarterback taken since we took Matt Ryan. So... You can wait on your quarterback, and you're still getting top tier talent. Okay, these guys are going to be top performers. They're going to get you, you know, a good volume of points. That you can still get an explosive uh, quarterback at that point. Now, I know D Money, and I know he loves to take a full lineup. So, with the 13th round, let's go ahead and. Let's pick our D, see what we've got here on our roster. Uh, we've got one bench spot left. Now we can save that, and I know he loves to have a backup quarterback. I'm going to show you guys what you can get at the last pick of the draft, okay? So with that said, let's see here. Look at our defense, Niners, Ravens. If we look at this, uh, really doesn't matter whichever one I pick. Um, I know the, the Niners have, have a good defense, but they also can have their moments where they give up a lot of points. I like the Ravens better personal preference here so we're going to take baltimore and you see a lot of a lot of defenses going off the board there um let's go kicker let's check out our draft board real quick so you see we took the ravens and the only other teams that were gone was new england and pittsburgh so in new england went really early in the 11th. Uh, Pittsburgh went same the beginning of the same round that we picked. So I'm, I'm cool with that. New England, I, I wouldn't pick a defense in the 11th spot. Look at all the guys you, you missed out on. I mean, uh, you know, Manuel Sanders, John Brown, uh, Carson Wentz, Drew Brees, Deontay Johnson, you could have taken him. Evan Ingram, you could have got your, your uh, tight end. Justin Jefferson. I don't see the Tony Pollard thing happening. Uh, that's a handcuff in case of uh, injury. He's also got another handcuff up here. So there's a lot of handcuffs going on on this team. Um, with that said, we've got one more round after this to pick. Right now, we're going to go kicker. Now, yes, you could go ahead and not pick a kicker. You could not pick a defense, either one you want to do. Um, you've got your, basically your choice of kickers, the only one that's gone. 
is um, Buckner from uh, Kansas City. He's not there. He's the number one kicker off the board. Um, we're going to go ahead take the best one available, Justin Tucker. Good old reliable. And you see, look, Jerry Judy went off the board 14th round. Okay. So it is possible to get a lot of value. There's a lot of upside with Jerry Judy right there. Okay. So let's see who we have for a backup quarterback. Guys, Cam Newton, Big Ben. Okay. Who do you want to take? Okay. If we look at Big Ben, we've got Juju. I'm going to take Big Ben. I wouldn't have minded the Cam Newton thing. I wouldn't have, uh, you know, hollered anybody about it. And they were wind up with a B. Not too bad D money for the mock draft. Uh, I do want to show you guys what was left on the board. So, left on the board, Jalen Rager. I'm loving Jalen Rager. Uh, Henry Ruggs III, Speedster, McCall Hardman could be something in KC is something to keep an eye on. Uh, Nikhil Harry, guys, listen to me. Nikhil Harry can be very valuable this year, but as you see, you can wait on him. Um, as far as quarterbacks go, you see your quarterbacks, uh, Cam Newton, Jared Goff, uh, I don't believe in Baker, um, Kirk Cousins, Jimmy G, I, I'm not a real big Jimmy G fan. Uh, Phillip Rivers, guys, Phillip Rivers, Drew Locke, um, Teddy could have a lot of upside for you this year. Um, so there's definite value later in the draft with quarterbacks. Uh, don't feel pressured into taking anyone specific. Now, with that said, I'm going to tell you right now, if you are drafting, let's say, the one spot and you get back-to-back -back and somehow either Mahomes or Lamar fall to you at the turn and you've gone running back, running back, and you're comfortable waiting on a wide receiver, Go ahead and take Lamar with your third overall, your third pick, or your first pick in the third round. Because uh, that's probably what you're doing right there is you're getting a running back, quarterback in one. Okay, so that's something to think about. So with that said, let's hop out of this. All right, guys. So. That was Mock Draft Monday here at Fantasy Football Academy 2020. Uh, I have been your host, the Dean, D-Money. I hope it was helpful. Not too helpful because he's in my draft. So uh, just to give you guys a heads up, this will be uh, my league of record, uh, the draft that we're doing on the 8th. Uh, and uh, coincidentally, happy birthday. It's going to be for my boy D-Money, September 8th. Uh, turning a big old 2-1. Boy's legal to drink now, so we'll get him his favorite beverage and uh, have a good old time at the draft. Hopefully he won't be too tanked to, uh, to draft properly because remember, friends do let friends draft drunk. Uh, that is one of my mistakes that people make during a draft. So D-Money, I hope you don't fall into that category. Remember, we don't want the Golden Plunger Award again, which is for the dead last place team. He's already got that. That's why he's following this channel, as you should. Go down bottom, subscribe, like, share. Guys, appreciate the time. Hit me back. Smash the thumbs up button. I'd greatly appreciate it. Guys, I'm here for you. Please be here for me. I appreciate it. Have a good one. Thank you to all my sponsors, to Zia of Lafayette for sponsoring the draft this year, and to Cajun Fitness in Rain, Louisiana, uh, with their other five locations. Check them out on the web. CajunFitness.com. Uh, look at all the deals they have coming up. And if you're in the Lafayette area, go stop by Zia of Lafayette on Ducey Road, uh, right behind the movie theater and in front of Reds. So, guys, this has been Mock Draft Monday for the 6th of July. Thank you very much. And remember, if you want your own personalized mock draft, hit me up in the comments section below. 
Uh, you can also hit me up at Fantasy Football Academy 2020 at Gmail and at Yahoo. So hit me up with your uh, your questions, your request, and uh, look forward to seeing you again soon. This has been the Dean for Fantasy Football Academy 2020. See you guys next time.